Hello everyone, welcome to episode 12 of Soccer Craft. In the last episode, we made these flower farms. And we used those flowers to help us pretty up and terraform the terrain around Kyoshi Island. In this episode, I'm hoping to put us one step closer to completion on Kyoshi Island. I want to get some more building done and I want to actually build up another mountain. And I'm going to take you guys along for the ride this time and talk to you about my thought process when I'm building up the mountains in this Kyoshi Island area. Alright, while getting started on building a mountain, the first thing you need to do is collect up a whole lot of stone. Now stone is one of the easiest things to collect. I got all of this stone from uh, beacon mining. I also you have a stone farm in the oops. I also have a stone farm in the mountain out there. Uh, what kind of who is this farm? And okay, let's grab this stone and bring it out to the site where we're gonna build up our next mountain. Okay, so here we are off to the back of Kyoshi Island, and I want to uh, build up the next mountain out here in this direction, leading out here. And I want to kind of create a, a valley here where we can create a kind of a lake and I want to turn it into a hot spring and I want to have the water flow through here and then come down here as a waterfall and then maybe make a pond down here and that'll help me uh, finish up what I can do in this kind of back area of Kyoshi Island. Maybe I'll add another tree here. Um, and yeah, so let's uh, get started with the mountain. If we pull up the reference picture I'm using to help me design my Kyoshi Island village, you can see in the back corner that there is a river. So this waterfall is really based on that. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to put that bridge in anywhere. I think I might just have to settle for a pond and a waterfall, but I think this is going to be a good addition to help bring some more realism to my reference photo into the build. So what you just watched there was a small time lapse of me building up the first stem of the mountain. Um, I needed to figure out how tall I wanted this mountain to be and I'm kind of walking through the village just to see what it will kind of look like height wise compared to the other mountains. I think I got it at a good point. Let's uh, see it from the sky. So yeah, I wanted these back mountains to be a bit taller than all the other mountains so I think I'm at a good height here. Now, what I would have normally done to figure out the height that I wanted for the mountain is I would just walk out to the distance looking at the mountains, trying to figure out where I think the uh, a good center of the mountain would be. Then I would pillar up uh, just to kind of make it so that it's easy to see where the center point is. Something a little bit like that. So now in order to build the next branch, I like to fly up top, kind of look at the trajectory of the mountain and try to figure out where I think the circle of the mountain is going to be. Uh, it's going to be a pretty big mountain. This is the tallest one here. So I'm going to fly this one out, let's say, and try to land right around here. And let's just make sure to not splat. And okay. So let's say the mountain starts here. There's, oh, that, that mountain is uh, not lit up, so there's a lot of mobs in there. So, and, and this one's not gonna be lit up yet. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, I like to start off the bottom part of the mountain with just very few, uh, very a gradual inclines. So uh, you can bring it back a few and then go up one. And then uh, at this point, we're starting to get into actual mountain territory. So try to go up every single uh, block that we go towards the uh, center point. And then after a while, I'm going to say just a few more of these. I'm going to change to doing double blocks. Now, I find that trying to make everything kind of look uh, double blocks kind of gives a good uh, steepness to the mountains and a good texture to the mountains. You don't want it to look like a hill and just uh, be walkable. You kind of don't want it to be explorable by the regular Minecraft player. 
every once in a while just throw an extra one in there it's okay you want to give some variation try to make it feel organic Okay, so when I'm getting close to the top of the mountain, I like to try to flatten it out a little bit again. So that's what I'm going to start doing here. Going to start throwing in some one step inclines. And just try to finish getting to the destination. It looks like I actually need this to be a little bit steeper to line up with the other spots. So uh, maybe this needs to come up a little bit higher before I can do that. one then yeah we'll bring it in nice and easy and just like that we have our second stem complete now I'm gonna go ahead and time-lapse the rest of them and bring you in on the next mountain building step Now that the wireframe's complete, we can get started on the mountain walls. And we're going to start off over here where I want the wall to meet with the hot spring. So I'm going to come down to the bottom and I'm going to... Jesus, there's a lot of mobs around here. Sorry. So I'm going to come down to the bottom and I'm going to kind of just keep on going along with the pattern of how the uh, height of the last level is and just keep on bringing it up and going until it connects with something so just going to keep bringing that around and just going to keep going until it gets all the way up to the top really that's that's really all it takes is kind of just following the pattern all the way up So if we come down over here and have a look, you can see how the mountain is already coming together very quickly. Um, the two block gaps really kind of creates a nice steep look that works well for these mountains. And I'm just going to go ahead and time lapse up this pane and this pane and we'll see how this spring area is looking when we come back. So every once in a while you run into a situation where you have to um, build downwards uh, because there's too many mobs underneath the mountain because you neglected to light it up. So when doing so you're going to have to make sure you have a strong pinky because you're going to be pressing shift a lot and like so I've been pressing shift pretty much actually this whole time building this mountain. I don't know I just always always am holding down shift when I'm building for some reason. But yeah, when building down, I like to build down three blocks. It once again gives the illusion of uh, two to three block tall gaps, kind of stuff that normal Minecraft players can't uh, really easily navigate. Hey, well, I'd say it's looking pretty good from down here. Let's go check the uh, hot spring area. Yeah, this is looking pretty good. There's a few holes maybe. But yeah, we could work with this. So if we're going to be making this into a miniature lake, I need to get it up to this height right here. So this big opening here doesn't work for me. So I need to figure out a way to make that closed up. And I think I'm going to use cobblestone and try to make it look like um, there's like maybe some rock slide that happened. And that'll clog up this area enough to make a little mini lake. So 
So now what I'm doing to make this lake into a hot spring is I'm putting campfires. If you put campfires under just one block, the smoke is still going to come through. So that's going to make it look like the water is hot. Okay, so the landslide's looking pretty good. I think we're ready to put the water in. Okay, so I was having some trouble getting the water to spread how I thought it was. So what I'm going to try next is I've slabbed over this entire area and I'm going to waterlog all of the slabs and then break the slabs and see what happens. And it worked. We have our lake. The only problem with this lake is it is all flowing water and I kind of want it to all be source blocks mostly for preference just so I don't hear the water flowing all the time. So I'm just going to need to get a lot of kelp because uh, when you place uh, here if we go into the F3 screen you can see over on the right side it says Minecraft flowing water true. If we put um, kelp in the water space it becomes a source block so it stops the water from flowing so I'm gonna have to put kelp all throughout this lake. And now we just have a lake filled with kelp. Now when I remove all this kelp it should all be just regular source blocks. Okay, so now that all the kelp is removed while we're swimming around the water, we shouldn't see any falling water. And so far it looks like that is correct. So good. We have a proper man-made lake now. And if you're curious how much kelp that took, it took that much. Okay, so next we just need to get this waterfall sorted out. So I think if I just put one more water block there and I unblock it right here we have it flowing down and is are those holes gonna catch it yeah perfect okay so uh, let's see what this looks like from the sky shall we okay that looks good I really like how that's looking I just need to uh, create a pond in this area for the water to flow into and I think this uh, hot spring project is done. One other thing I could look at, however, is you can't see the smoke above the water. If I put hay bales underneath those campfires, it should make the smoke go up a lot higher and we should be able to see those. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that time lapse. I've just been sprucing the place up a little bit. <laughs> Get it, spruce? <laughs> uh, anyways, yeah, so we got the uh, pond in place. I got my uh, new big spruce tree in. Uh, we got just a little bit of vegetation on the ground and uh, in the pond. And you know, everything, it's, it's feeling more complete every time I do just a small thing. And it's really in the detail phase now, uh, at least in the village part. But we still have a lot of work to do up here in the peninsula area. I need to put in the Kiyoshi statue here. There's going to be an archway here and I kind of just need to pretty up the place. Maybe a few more of the small trees and uh, some flowers around here. But I think I'm going to save all of this area for the next video. And that's because I have an idea for a small redstone project that can just give me a break from building because I've just been doing too much of it this episode. So I'm going to build up a, a little cave entrance here to get into the mountain 
and then we're gonna make a piston door so that it's uh, a little bit more hidden how you get into these mountains okay so I created this cavern to put the piston door in and it's going to go right here and uh, I'm not very good at piston doors when it comes to redstone item sorters and uh, so a bunch of other fun contraptions are the type of stuff that I'm good at so I'm going to create a really simple piston door for this one and throughout this series I'm going to create a bunch more piston doors and we're going to try to teach ourselves to be better at uh, piston door redstone. Okay so for the design that we're doing today we're going to need a few sticky pistons and uh, let's just grab a bunch of redstone uh, materials. Uh, we probably don't need those. Okay so these four blocks right here are the blocks that are we are going to be pushing back and forth. So we need to put our pistons like so now if we put a block behind the bottom piston and put some redstone on top of that and i'm going to put a redstone torch underneath that block and that is going to extend that out so now the piston door is closed and now we just need to turn the torches off in order to open it and in order to turn a redstone torch off, uh, you have to power the block that it's on. So I move the torch from here over to this block. And then I have a redstone line running into this block with a repeater that will then be powering the block, which will turn off the torch. Here is an example. And the torch turns off and that makes the piston open. And when I break this, it will close, open, close. Perfect. I did the same thing on the other side and these redstone lines run to this monostable circuit. So basically whenever a button is pressed that activates this monostable circuit, let me see if I can position myself so you can see this. There's a sticky piston underneath this block which will push this block up for a second which will give this repeater a one tick pulse which will make this piston shoot out that redstone block and the redstone block will stay there. Just like that. So that's exactly what we wanted. So now that's like an on and off switch. So now that these lines are both powered and now they are off. So that's like opening and closing the door. And that's basically it. I then just ran these uh, these two redstone lines that power the monostable circuit to buttons in each room and we have a working door. Perfect. I, uh, I think I get the gist of uh, piston door mechanics. I just need to figure out how to do all the bigger piston doors with the double piston extenders and all the other whatchamacallits. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I'm going to end the episode here. Uh, I'm going to, in between episodes, decorate this room and uh, do a little bit of decoration on the other side of the wall here to kind of raise up the ground to kind of make it not as much of an awkward drop right when you go through the door. Um, if you guys enjoyed the episode, please leave a like and consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys next time.